Hey y'all, it's Trish. Today we are going to decorate my tear tray for Valentine's Day. I don't go all out for every holiday that comes around, but I do like bringing a little bit of each season into my home, and I've found that my tear tray is the perfect way to do it. So let's hop on over and see what I make for Valentine's Day. Our first project, we're going to use this heart that I got from the Dollar Tree. And we are also going to use some Waverly chalk paint in white, a pencil, and some of these rub-on transfers that also came from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I did was take the paper off the front of this. It was pretty much peeled off anyway, but I finished peeling it off and then I sanded it down to smooth it out. Now we're just going to take our Waverly chalk paint and give it a good coat of paint and leave it to dry. Once our paint is dry, I took my ruler and I just made some marks across this, kind of like shiplap. I'm just wanting to give it some character. I didn't measure these, I just kind of eyeballed them and I thought it turned out fine. And then I just used my finger and I smudge them to soften them out. Now I'm going to take my pencil and go around the edges of this and I just kind of scribble some on and then I smudge it out with my finger and this just gives it some really nice soft distressing. Once we are finished with that, I'm going to take that rub on transfer that came from the Dollar Tree and I figure out which pieces of it I want to put on my heart. I cut those out and then I lay it down on top of the heart where I want it to go. And I use my little spatula thing. I got this from Cricut, but you could use a credit card, anything you have with a straight edge. And I rub over it really good and then lift it up and it leaves the transfer on the piece. I love these y'all. They are so pretty and y'all know how much I love mixed media and this gives it that same feel. It layers up our wording on here and I can layer up the textures and I just love how it came out. Once I got the major pieces down that I really wanted on there, I just kept going back and cutting out other little pieces and filling in those little blank areas. I didn't want to leave anything with a big hole. It doesn't matter if there's some white showing, but I didn't want any really big holes. So we're just going to keep filling this in with all those little pieces. And then I found that I had not gotten all of the transfer off of this one piece. So I grabbed it and started taking Taking those little pieces that were left on there and filling in some of those little areas that were left. For our next project, we're just going to use some sticks that I went outside and picked up out of my yard, some foam sheets in red and white. You could also use felt for this. And then a heart and an arrow end that I just traced out onto a piece of paper and our glue gun. The first thing I did was cut out my pattern and then I'm going to trace four on each color, four of the hearts and four of the arrow ends. Now, if you're not going to make four or you're just wanting to use one color, what you need is two hearts and two arrow ends for each arrow that you're going to make. I trace these out and then I cut them out. Once you get them cut out, this is so easy. We're just going to put some hot glue on one side and then we put our stick down into it and then press the other side on top of it, sandwiching the stick into in between it. You want to make sure you press it really good. Now we're going to take our heart and do the same thing. I put some hot glue on it, put my stick down and then put another heart on top of it and sandwich it in. I love these little arrows, y'all, especially when the stick is a little bit curved. I don't know. I just think it gives it more character. We'll do one more in white. I actually ended up doing four, two red and two white. Two of them was a little bit shorter than the other two. And y'all, I just love these so much. How cute are these little arrows? Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week offering a variety of DIYs, 
trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. For our next project, we're going to use one of these little mini mason jars. I got this from the Dollar Tree. We're going to use a aisle to uh, punch a hole in the top. I'm going to cut out this little tag that I made and print it on some of my craft paper. We're going to use one of these little wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree, some twine, and then my hole punch to punch a hole with. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and punch a hole in our heart because we want to be able to hang this in our jar. I'm going to thread my twine through there and tie it into a knot and then trim off that end and then I'll cut off a piece of my twine. I'm going to take my awl and punch a hole in the top of my lid and then I'm going to um, thread that twine through there and then hang my heart down and you can see I pulled it up where you couldn't see but I was just seeing how far it hung down I didn't want it to touch the bottom I figured out how low it needed to hang and then I'm going to tie a triple knot into my twine so it don't fall through and trim that off I'll put a little bit of hot glue in there just to hold it in place now I'm going to take my little tag and punch a hole in it and then I cut my twine and I'm going to wrap it around the top of this two or three times and tie it into a double knot. Then we will thread on our little tag and tie another knot and trim it off and this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree this printable that i made and printed out i'll put a copy to it down below if you would like to have it we're going to use some mod podge some waverly chalk paint in white one of these tumbling tower blocks and some acrylic paint in melted chocolate now you can probably see that i was trying to stain this with one of my stain markers but it didn't have enough ink left in it to completely stain this and i didn't like how it was covering anyway so i just grabbed some melt chocolate or melted chocolate acrylic paint mixed it with some water and used it for a stain we are going to paint this on and let it dry Once that was dry, I took my white Waverly chalk paint and my chippy brush and I just do some distress painting all over this. I used a pretty heavy hand. I wanted to be able to see the brown, but I wanted more of the white on there. Then we're going to let this dry. Now I'm going to take my little printable that I made and I want it to fit the top of this heart. Now this heart has these beveled edges on it so you can see I'm kind of pressing it around so that I can feel that edge and then I'm going to take my pencil and just kind of scribble around that edge just to give me a cutting line. This may not be perfect but it actually worked out pretty good for this project. Once I got my lines on there I'm just going to cut this out and then we will apply it to our heart. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of Mod Podge on here. We will spread that out pretty thin. You don't want it to be too thick. That causes bubbles and wrinkles. And then we're going to press our paper down on it. And we are going to smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles that we get. And let this completely dry. Once it's dry, I decided that I wanted to finish off those edges, so I grabbed some distressing ink and my dauber, and I just kind of go around those edges, and to me, it makes it look like this belongs on there. To make a stand for this, I'm going to take my tumbling tower block, glue it onto the bottom, and this project will be finished. For our next project, we're going to use this little house sign. I got this at the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure it came from one of the dollar stores. We're going to use this wording that I printed out with my computer. I'll put a link to it down below if you'd like a copy. We're going to use one of these red glitter heart stickers. I got these from Hobby Lobby last year. We're going to use some Waverly chalk paint in white, my pencil, and some permanent markers. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is give our little house a good coat of paint. It took about two coats to cover my words completely, and I did paint the front and the back of this and left it to dry. Once our paint was dry, I take my pencil and I just kind of smudge around those edges just to give it some depth and dimension. Then I'm going to take my wording and I scribble on the back of it with my pencil. You guys have seen us do this a hundred times. We'll lay it down on our project and then we're going to trace over it with our pencil and this transfers it onto our project. Now, if you have a cutting machine, you could cut these words out. If you have good handwriting, you could freehand this. You could use stickers, whatever works best for you. I just really like this method and I really like being able to show you how you can make projects, whether you have a cutting machine or not. Once I get my letters transferred on, I use my markers and fill it in. Now I'm using these graphic illustration markers from Hobby Lobby. I really like these markers, but if you don't have any, you could use a permanent marker like a Sharpie or one of the jot markers. Once we get our words on, we're gonna take one of these little hearts and stick it at the top and this project will be finished. For this project, it is so simple. We're going to use one of these little vases. I got it from the thrift store. Some of these bamboo skewers, some of this heart scatter from the Dollar Tree, some ribbon, and some greenery and baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. All we are going to do is figure out what part of our greenery we want to use. I pull off about three pieces and stick it down into my little vase. I love this little vase. It came in a pack of three at the thrift store. Then I'm going to cut some of my baby's breath. I cut three little pieces of it and I stick those down in there. I like using threes when I do things like this. Then we're going to take three of those little hearts and three of our skewers. And it was about this point that I realized I needed to, you know, make these skewers some color besides the brown wood. So I grabbed some green paint and used a paper towel and just kind of painted my little skewers just so they would blend in with my greenery that was in there and wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb. Once these were dry, I'm going to stick my little hearts on to each one of them, make them kind of look like a flower, and then I'm just going to trim them off at different lengths. Now we will stick those down into our little vase and arrange those in place. You just do what looks good to your eye. The last thing I'm going to do is take a piece of ribbon, wrap it around that vase about three times, and then tie it into a bow, and this project will be finished. For our last project, you know I had to make a bead garland. We're going to use some red and white beads from Walmart, some red and white twine. I think this came from Dollar General, some white Waverly chalk paint, some crimson Waverly chalk paint, and two little wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree. One comes in that chalk looking set and then one came from the little scatter and I'm going to use my little hole punch to punch a hole in my smaller heart. I'm also going to use the rest of this rub on transfer from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I did was paint one side of my heart with my crimson chalk paint. It took about three coats to get this covered really well and then I let it dry. Once that was dry, I'm going to paint the other side with my white chalk paint and leave it to dry. Now that all of our paint is dry, I'm going to take that little rub on transfer. I love this thing, y'all. I want to find some more of these. And then I use my little spatula and I rub over it really good and it transfers onto my heart. Now, it didn't quite cover all the way to the end, so you can see that I'm just kind of piecing it together to make sure that I have writing all over this and don't have any big gaps anywhere. Once we get that one done, I decided to take 
what was left over of this little um, script part here and put it onto the red heart. Now, it didn't make words. It was just kind of pieced together. But again, I didn't really care about that. I was wanting more of just having the script on there. I can't read it anyway. I think it's in French. Now I'm going to take my gray ink and my dauber and I'm going to finish up those edges. I just have a thing about finishing these edges so it looks like it was meant to be that way. Then we're going to take our twine and thread it through both of our hearts and tie it into a knot. Make sure you get it up at the top when you tie it. I tie it double knotted and then I trim it off and then I cut off a piece that's about 20 inches long. I got ahead of myself and started making a tassel by wrapping my twine around my hand about 20 times. And then I realized I couldn't put it on yet. I have to put my beads on. Duh. So I laid it to the side. Now I'm going to put my twine onto a big darning needle and then I start threading my beads on. I do a pattern of two red and one white until I get it as long as I want it. I think I ended up using about 23 or 24 beads here. You just do what you like and make it as long as you want it to be. We'll keep putting our beads on until we get it finished. Then we're going to take our needle off and take those loops that I had made and tie them on to the end with a double knot. Make sure you get it as close to that bottom bead as you can possibly get it. We're going to trim that off. Then we're going to take another piece of twine and wrap it around the top about three or four times and tie it into a double knot and trim it off. Now we can cut open all of those loops and we have a tassel. I wanted this to be softer, so I just grabbed a brush and I brushed it until it unraveled. And once I did that, this project was complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye y'all!